This video is going to take a quick look at shift stability, a little introduction that includes the components that make up stability and the six vessel motions. And this is going to be material that you're likely to see on U.S. Coast Guard exams. So the material is going to follow along with stability and trim for the ship's officer, chapter two. Okay, so to understand ship stability, we first have to really understand how a ship moves when confronted with external forces. So because a ship is three-dimensional, it has three axes of motion. And these are the vertical axis. That would be this one here. We have the transverse axis. And the longitudinal axis. So in order for a ship to be considered stable, it has to be able to respond, mitigate, control, or return to equilibrium. We want upright equilibrium, like you see in the picture. And the ship needs to be able to respond to the six different ways that it can move along these three axes. Okay, so taking a look at our model here, we're going to be looking first at the vertical axis, the vertical axis, which is the blue axis here. Number one, the blue axis. So the vertical axis is going to be associated with two types of movement. So this first type of motion is called heave. When the ship heaves, it's traveling up and down without any kind of spin or torque or twisting. So that's literally a displacement that's changing the draft. We're going to see shortly here the next type of motion, and this is going to be a pattern that fits all these axes. There's going to be one type that's bodily, as we see now, which is sliding up and down. This is heave. And our next type of motion going to be rotational around the very same axis. So rotational motion around the vertical axis is called yaw. So this is the first pair of motion types, and one is always going to be bodily motion, that sliding factor, and then the second is going to be rotational. The next axis we're looking at is the transverse axis. This is the red line it passes through the exact same point as the vertical axis does right through the mid body of the ship there. So they're all passing through the very same center of mass. The transverse axis is always going to be port and starboard oriented. So this is going to be the narrower dimension of our ship as opposed to the long dimension. Transverse is always the crossways side to side port to starboard. So what we're looking at in this movement pattern is sway. This is bodily motion along the transverse axis. So just like heaving sway is non-rotational. So your heading isn't going to change and your ship's going to stay oriented in the same direction. All it is is a horizontal movement. It's getting pushed off its path or track either to the port or starboard side without any kind of torque or twisting force. This is sway, bodily motion along the transverse axis. The angular counterpart to that is pitch. This is the same axis of motion, the transverse axis, but now we're seeing a rotational movement pattern. This is a rocking back and forth as the ship would ride over a, a swell or set of waves. So our third and final axis of motion is the green line here. That is the longitudinal axis. And we're seeing bodily motion along the green axis. This is surge. Ship is sliding forward, sliding backward, forward, backward in a bodily fashion. So again, no rotation. This is just sliding along the green longitudinal axis. This is surge. And our final type of rotational force 
let's change the view here. So looking head on the vessel, we're now looking right down that longitudinal axis. And we're going to see what happens when the rotational motion is applied. We're getting roll. This is rolling or roll. So I intentionally put roll at the end of our demonstration here because it's of the most concern when we're talking about ship stability in a general or practical sense. In fact, most times when you say ship stability, you're simply talking about transverse stability or roll stability. The reason why this is, is that when you're loading cargo, the proper loading and the proper placement and securing of cargo is the most influential factor in determining how your ship responds to rolling motion. And that makes it a high priority for safety. So let's take a look at transverse or roll stability. So this is our diagram of a transverse hull cross section. And we've got it simplified way down. We're looking at the ship's hull, just the outline of it call this the starboard side over here, port side over here, so our ideal is to have a perfectly upright ship just the way we see it here, perpendicular to the water plane, in a state of equilibrium, right? We want the forces to be balanced so the ship isn't tipping in any particular direction. So obviously this is a condition where there's no discernible wind or wave action. The ship is simply floating without any external forces acting on it. So internally you want it to be balanced right off the bat. So the light ship without any cargo in it at all should sit upright just like we see here in the diagram. Let's add in our center line. This is gonna bisect the hull into equal parts, starboard and port side. So we would expect that somewhere along this center line, above the keel, K, our center of gravity is gonna exist on that vertical line somewhere. We don't know exactly how high, and that's gonna be determined by the overall weight or displacement of the light ship plus any cargo that's loaded. But we know that if the ship's sitting up right here, that the forces should be lining up vertically on that center line. And that's how we know they're balanced. So the center of gravity, G, let's just assume that it's, it's right here. The center of gravity is the net combined downward force acting on the combined weight of everything on the ship. So again, if we're assuming that the ship is in a state of balance, it's not sinking, it's floating in a neutral upright position, that means we have to have a buoyant force acting against the downward gravitational force. So the buoyant force is pushing up in the opposite direction. So the location for point B is going to be determined exclusively by the volume of the submerged part of the vessel. So we're looking for the submerged part of the ship and the center of volume for that submerged part. That's where point B, the net upward force, the buoyant force, is going to be expressed. And it's gonna cancel out the quantity of the downward force displacement, G, right? So our forces are equal, our ship doesn't go anywhere, and everyone's happy. When we're looking at our calculations for stability, we're going to be concerned with the distances of our two points, B and G. So in each case, we're going to reference the distance from K, the keel. So KG would tell you the height of the center of gravity. And KB is going to tell you the height of the vertical center buoyancy. So keep those two measurements in mind as we go forward with our videos and talk about more concepts and more problems that you might see on Coast Guard exams, you're going to see KG and KB factoring in an awful lot into those formulas.
So let's see what happens when our upright position changes. So let's assume there's a wave coming from the port side and pushes the ship over so that it heals over. So assuming that the cargo is loaded correctly, and hopefully this will start to impress upon you how important that is, as long as the cargo doesn't shift, that there's no internal weight that changes within the vessel, within the frame of the hull, within this space, if we don't get a shift of weight, then our center of gravity is going to stay the same, right? Gravity is still going to be acting through the same spot, pushing downwards in the same direction and in the same amount. But our center of buoyancy, B, is going to shift. Here's the original position. Call this B sub 1. So it's going to shift over here. Why? Because the volume, the submerged volume, has changed due to the tipping of the ship. And so B is now in a different central location to that new volume that we've 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 modified. So when we have the two forces in the same line we have a lack of motion because they're quantitatively the same and they're pushing in the same line of direction so they cancel out. When the forces shift apart, we have what's called a couple. And so we can see what will happen if the same force pushes down and it's over here, right? We're pushing down this way and the identical force is pushing up but a little bit to the side here. Well we should see the vessel rotate, right? It's going to want to move. It's going to move this direction in response because the buoyant force is pushing up, the gravitational force is pushing down, and it's going to want to twist the vessel back into that upright position. This is what you want to have happen. This is the desired outcome. So the vessel is going to seek that upright equilibrium that we had in our examples before. Our incline position is going to add one more point to the mix. So we're going to be interested in now seeing where the line of force for buoyancy intersects our vertical line here. So we can draw it right on. This intersecting point is called the transverse metacenter, or M. So adding M gives us a new line segment that is going to be informative, and that's the distance between G and M. GM is the metacentric height of a vessel, and it's important to understand that it really only applies small angles of inclination, like around maybe a max of 10 degrees or so. The GM is going to be a, a, an indicator of this writing behavior. So it's not directly the indicator. We're going to take a look at that right on the next slide. But GM is going to give you an idea, a sense, of your vessel's writing tendency when it's inclined in situations like this. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about the final component to transverse stability. That's going to be the writing moment or writing arm. These two are kind of used interchangeably. They're not exactly the same thing, but let's, let's walk through it now. So when we have a couple between the B, the buoyant force, and the G, the gravitational force, when that rotational couple, that system of writing moment is created on an incline, the perpendicular green line is the riding arm and that's the distance between the distance between the two vertical forces so the distance between the B and G force the buoyant force and the gravitational force that's the riding arm and we label that with a letter Z so point Z is going to designate a line segment GZ our riding arm the farther that distance right the farther the space between the upward force B and the downward force G, well, it's like a lever. So if we, if we increase the distance outboard, that increase in distance is going to result in a greater rotational force. 
because we're pushing from farther away. We're getting more leverage. And so that's going to spin the vessel back into place faster. If Z is farther away, opposite of true, obviously being if Z is in the other direction. But the distance is important as it pertains to the writing moment. So when we multiply the length of the writing arm GZ by the displacement of the vessel delta, that's what this symbol is, delta GZ, when that's multiplied out, it results in a quantity called writing moment, which is measured in foot tons. So it's got a distance component and a force or weight component, foot tons. And this value, the magnitude of writing moment is a direct measure of momentary transverse stability. So the greater the weight through G downward, that's also going to increase the writing moment, which measures again, the momentary stability of a ship. That's how aggressively the ship is going to write itself and return to that upright equilibrium that we want. You know, we've drawn a little triangle there, GZ, right? When we all have a hypotenuse of that right triangle is GM. So we can see there's a relationship building there. Uh, so GM is directly proportional to GZ. So it's a good measure for transverse stability as well. So without the ship having to lean over, we can calculate a GM for the ship at shallow inclination angles, which is what we're going to be commonly experiencing. The GM is actually going to inform, inform us about the general writing tendencies of the ship. The higher GM, obviously, the greater the GZ, and the greater the delta GZ, or the writing moment. So the, the higher or the larger GM you have, the greater the writing force. So if you have a good large GM, that means your ship's going to be very stable and it's going to snap back to the upright position when B shifts over to the side in an incline state. Now, before you get too concerned about complexity, this is about the most complicated that it gets. So really what we're talking about are the relationships between point G, point B, and point M. And those three points dictate the whole system. So stay tuned to this channel. We're going to be taking a look further at stability, breaking down the different ways you can use these measurements to solve problems, especially for Coast Guard exams. We'll be taking a look at a lot of other different maritime subjects as well in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.